What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Nurse Bass back with another video. And guys, what I have for you in this video is the very first installment into our Mastering Dosage Calculations Learning Playlist. And what we're going to do is we're going to start this entire playlist off with the foundational information of how we're going to go about solving dosage calculation questions using the DEC method. Let's dive in. Are you listening? Nurse Bass. Beast mode. So guys, like I said, here in this first video, we're going to show you guys how to solve dosage count questions using the deck method. And so the deck method is basically something that I came up with. It's the way in which I go about solving dosage count questions. It's the easiest way that I found that actually works best for me. So the deck method basically is an acronym. It stands for first dissecting the question. This is where you're going to go in and you're going to break down every component of the question that you're being given primarily. What are what is the supply of medication that you're being given? What uh, is being ordered by the physician? And what are you being asked? What units are you being asked to solve for in the question? Uh, and it's also going to be where you take note of any kind of differences in the units that you're being given, whether it's mils versus liters or milligrams versus grams. All of these things, key components to the question that you're going to want to dissect out that are going to help you answer the question appropriately. Number two is eliminating filler information. To be honest, this is probably something that would work also if you did this first, but I kind of want to teach it in this way to get you used to dissecting the question on your own, being able to recognize and pick out uh, what is important in the question without needing to eliminate the filler information. But then I'm going to show you guys how to eliminate the filler, how eliminating the filler information makes answering these questions a lot easier. The third one is converting units if needed. If you notice that there are differences in units whenever you were dissecting the question. And the fourth one is to cross multiply. And so basically this fourth, this fourth one here, this is where you cross multiply and you step by step solve the question. Because basically not every question is going to be so cut and dry where you're going to do one round of cross multiplication and you've got your answer. This is where you kind of step by step come to the solution. So guys, let's first go ahead and dive in with a little example question. So for our example question, this is how it's going to be written on any exam, just a typical kind of question that you might get on an exam. The attending physician has ordered four grams of flagell IV piggyback to be administered at a rate of 500 milligrams per hour. The flagell is reconstituted in 500 mils of normal saline. At what rate do you program the pump in mils per hour? So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick out every piece of information about this question that is important and pertinent to know. So let's go through and pick out everything that's important to know. Okay. Well, attending physician has ordered four grams of flagell, four grams, uh, to be administered at a rate of 500 milligrams per hour. The flagell is reconstituted in 500 mils. And basically what I'm doing is I'm underlying every piece of given information that we get. What is every piece of given information that we receive? And at what rate do you program the pump in mils per hour? So, Whenever we go through here and we look at this, first thing we're going to figure out is what's actually being ordered. The attending physician has ordered four grams of flagell. Now you may, uh, as a knee jerk reaction, go ahead and write down four grams right here beside of ordered, but that wouldn't exactly be right. And the reason why is because you have to read the entire question, right? To be administered at a rate, to be administered at a rate of 500 milligrams per hour. And how do we know? You, you know that what is being ordered here is a rate because the end question is asking for you to solve in a rate, at a rate uh, of mils per hour. So what's actually being ordered here is the rate of 500 milligrams per hour. Now, how is the medication being supplied to us? Well, the attending physician has ordered four grams of flagell, and we see that the flagell is reconstituted in 500 mils of normal saline. So the supply is four grams in 500 mils. And this given information component is basically the fact that we have a difference in milligrams and grams. So we know there's going to be some conversion that's needed. And also, what are we being answered? What units are we being expected to answer this question in? That is mils per hour. So that's how you dissect the question. You want to go through, you want to take note of any values that you're being given. You want to take note of any differences in units, such as in this example, the difference between four grams and our rate of 500 milligrams. We know that there's a difference in units, 
So therefore, there's going to need to be a conversion component to our deck method for this question. And you also want to take note of what is ordered, what is supplied, and at what rate you have to answer the question. So whenever you go through the example question, like we're talking about eliminating the BS stuff that you don't need. I don't care about the attending physician. I really don't care about the med. I kind of don't care about the route. Let me just show you what this looks like, right? So if you went through here and just simply eliminated what you didn't need to know, right? What's ordered? Four grams. All right, cool. That's great to know. It's administered at a rate of 500 milligrams per hour. The flagell is in 500 mils of normal saline. At what rate do you program the pump in mils per hour? So now that we've gotten rid of some of this nonsense, this information we don't need, let's reread the question. Ordered four grams, a rate of 500 milligrams per hour. The flagell is in 500 mils of normal saline. At what rate do you program the pump in mils per hour? So now that you have it, you could say, what's, the, what's being ordered? Well, it's four grams, but it's at a rate of 500 milligrams per hour. Our supply, four grams and 500 mils. And then the given information is again, mils per hour. So it's just, the purpose of the eliminating of the filler info is to get you more comfortable, more acclimated to looking at a question at face value and being able to intrinsically dissect and pick out the important pieces of information without having to manually go through and scratch out pieces of the question that are not pertinent. Again, this is dosage calc, right? We're concerned with the numbers. We're concerned with the math. That's what's going to set us free on these exams. All right, so the third component to this deck method is converting units if necessary. And in this question, because we have grams and we have milligrams, two differing units, we know there's gonna be some conversion needed. So as far as converting the units, what we have here is we have two differing values. We have four grams and we have 500 milligrams. Now, what you may initially be asking yourself is, well, to which unit do I convert? Do I convert to grams or do I convert to milligrams? In this particular example of question, it doesn't matter. You can convert to grams if you want to, or you can convert to milligrams if you want to. And why doesn't it matter? Because we are asking for our answer to be given to us in mils per hour. That's what we're concerned with. We're not concerned with our answer being in milligrams per hour or our answer being in grams per hour. In this example, we're concerned with mils per hour. So because our final answers units do not contain grams or milligrams, it does not matter whether you convert to grams or milligrams. Now, for me personally, as a rule of thumb, I usually always convert to the smallest unit. Um, so what I would likely do in this instance is I would convert my four grams over to milligrams. And so how do you do that? For those of you out there, you, you should go ahead and get acclimated with the simple idea that one gram equals 1,000 milligrams, or in other words, there are 1,000 milligrams in one gram. So if you know that information, then how do you convert four grams over to milligrams? You're going to simply multiply four grams by 1,000 milligrams. And four grams times 1,000 milligrams is a total of 4,000 milligrams. So we've, what we've done is we've gone ahead and converted our four grams over into milligrams. And so what we could do is we could come up here to our supply and we could cross that out. And instead of saying, what our supply is, is four grams and 500 mils. We could actually just go ahead and rewrite it, and I would, as 4,000 milligrams in 500 mils. And so what I would go ahead and do at this point is instead of having 4,000 milligrams and 500 mils, I would go ahead and break this down further and do the math. How many milligrams are in one mil? And the reason why you want to go ahead and do this math is so that you can do the cross multiplication in the fourth step. So if you go ahead and do 4,000 divided by 500, and I think I already had it on the calculator previously, yes, it was eight. So what you actually have here, are you have a total of eight milligrams per one mil, right? That's what that math comes down to. 4,000 milligrams and 500 mils actually comes out to eight milligrams in one mil. And so it's at this point, now that we have our information, of 500 milligrams per hour is what's being ordered, and we know that there are eight milligrams in one mil, we can now cross multiply to figure out how many mils per hour our medication is gonna run at. So we're gonna write this here on the cross multiplication section, 
as eight milligrams in one mil. And so you guys know from cross multiplication, whatever units are on the top on the left also have to be on the top on the right. So what is being ordered here is 500 milligrams. So we're gonna write that up top on the right because milligrams up top on the left, milligrams are gonna be up top on the right. And we know that mils are on the bottom on the left, so these over here, this bottom value is gonna be mils. And this is what we're trying to solve for. We already know that we have 500 milligrams per hour as our ordered, but what we're trying to figure out here is how many mils per hour. And so at this point, we just go ahead and simply do the cross multiplication. So eight times X is gonna be eight X, and 500 times one is gonna equal 500. And so at this point, you go ahead and just do the division, divide both sides by eight. Of course, over here, the eights cancel out, just leaving you with X. And on the right side, you're gonna do 500 divided by eight. That's going to give you 62.5, which will be your answer. 62.5. X equals 62.5. And X was in mils per hour. So what we are running our medication at is a rate of 62.5 mils per hour. That is the way in which you use the deck method, ladies and gentlemen, to solve dosage calculation questions. Again, one, dissect the question. Pick out the important nitty gritty, need to know information. Two, eliminate filler info. Again, just as a practice so that you can then easily dissect questions without even needing to eliminate filler info. Three, convert units if needed, not always needed, but if needed. And four is the step by step solving of the problem using cross multiplication. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that it helped. Don't forget, this is just the first introductory video into our Mastering Dosage Calculations Learning Playlist. Hit that bell notification if you're already subscribed. These subscriptions or these, these notifications are not going out like they should be. And if you're new and you have not subscribed but you enjoy the content, maybe feel free to do so. It's your boy Nurse Bass. We're putting out videos every week to motivate, uplift, and inspire you to be the best damn nurse you can be. I hope you enjoyed the video. Share it with a friend if you found it helpful. And I hope you guys uh, tune into the next one whenever it drops. We'll see you in the next video.